All right, so now we're going to talk about ISO. ISO has been around for a long time, just like the other two features that I talked about of the camera. Um, ISO, I think of as the sensitivity to the light that's coming into your camera. The lower the ISO number, which means you know around 100 or a low number like 100, um, is relatively not a whole lot of sensitivity to the light. Um, it means that it's not increasing the intensity of the sensor's ability to capture that light, um, and it's not using any extra strength from your camera to try and intensify that light that's coming in. Now, when you increase that ISO number to a higher number, such as 1,000 or 1,200, you are increasing the sensitivity of your camera to that light. And with that, you're making it work really hard to find light out there and intensify it. And when it does that, it results in noise and other things going on in your image. Now, some of these cameras these days are becoming fantastic with the ISO sensitivity. And with my Canon 5D Mark III, I'm able to go up into the tens of thousands with the ISO and still have a relatively good looking image before it starts to degrade. The cheaper cameras and even older camera models tend to not work so well with ISO. On the Canon uh, Digital Rebel, the T4i that I have, it's actually really good and I've been able to get it up around 1800 with the ISO and still have a usable photo. And the ISO becomes a very useful tool in those situations because as I've talked about before, with your shutter speed and your aperture. If you have your shutter speed and your aperture somewhere that you're comfortable with, it's going to get the photo uh, looking the way that you want it to. You can use the ISO to bring a little bit more light into that situation because maybe your shutter speed and your aperture aren't actually uh, allowing for enough light to come into your camera to get the shot. You can increase your ISO to bring in more light. I'm doing that with the camera that's mounted right above my desk here to bring in more light because I have these bright lights shining at my face and uh, they're lighting me up really well, but they're not spilling a whole lot on to this dark table, which this dark table needs more light to light because it's dark. If this was a white table, I wouldn't necessarily need so much because there'd be a lot of reflection happening with the lighting right now. So just like with video, Photography, the ISO becomes an important tool with DSLRs that allows us to bring back some extra light into a situation. So that way, if, if I'm in a poor light situation, like at a wedding reception or even in the living room of my house on any given evening, I'm able to increase the ISO and still have a relatively decent shutter speed and aperture. So that way when my, my son is moving around and he's doing things and I'm trying to take a picture of him, it doesn't end up being blurry. I still get decent exposure without the photo being blurry because I can keep the shutter speed at around 1 25th of a second. And I can still have decent depth of field and, and a decent, uh, uh, you know, able to focus with a little bit of movement of my child um, by keeping the f-stop up above five. So with having those settings up a little bit and increasing my ISO, I make up for situations that would make things a little more difficult. Of course, you could still make do with having a camera that doesn't do very well with higher ISO by having a wider uh, aperture, you know, down to around 2.8 or something like that, or even having your shutter stay open a little bit longer. You just have to be careful with those fast moving objects or objects that move at all because you might end up with a little bit of blur. So um, what's fantastic about these newer cameras is how good they're getting at that ISO sensitivity without there being a ton of grain in the photo or other weird things happening. So ISO is a, is a simple adjustment. Um, once you usually have your your aperture and your shutter speed set, um, you can go ahead and adjust your ISO. ISO usually even has an auto option where you can put ISO in auto and let it do whatever it wants to do. So that might even be an option for you as you're getting used to this. I tend to stay in uh, a manual ISO adjustment um, just so that it doesn't get carried away in some low light situations and go too high. Um, so just as you can see here, ISO, if you go all the way down, A for auto, and then on this camera in particular, I can go all the way up to 6400, 
with my ISO, which if I was to take a picture at 6400 ISO, it would be extremely grainy. Um, and those numbers are going to vary depending upon the camera that you have, whether it's a Canon or a Nikon or um, a newer camera versus an older camera, where some of these cameras didn't even have an ISO range above uh, 1200 several years ago, and now they're up into the tens of thousands, and some cameras even 100,000. So ISO is a great thing, as long as you don't get too high with your ISO. Um, you can, of course, bring some of the grain out of your photo in post-production, like in Photoshop or Lightroom, but it doesn't always end up working out that way. So use ISO as I do, as kind of a buffer to help you get to where you want to be. You just can't use it, get carried away with it, and use it uh, too much because then you end up with grain and other artifacts in your photo like that.